Hello all, welcome to BP Talks. Today, let's listen about the dark side of quota coaching, student suicides. Kota is a city in the state of Rajasthan in India, which is known for its coaching industry. Students who want to prepare for various competitive exams, especially for engineering and medical entrance tests, they move to Kota. Every year, thousands of students from different parts of the country come to Kota to join the coaching institutes. Why Kota is famous for coaching? They say Kota has a large number of experienced and qualified teachers, well-developed infrastructure and facilities for the students. And it also provides a competitive environment that motivates the students to work hard and perform better. Kota has become a hub of coaching for young minds. Parents take pride in sending their children to Kota for coaching. However, the coaching industry in Kota has also been plagued by several issues such as high fees, lack of regulation and mental stress. Kota is not only famous for coaching and academics, but also for student suicides. Yes, you heard it right. Student suicides in Kota is a serious and tragic issue that has been affecting many young lives in India. The pressure and stress of these exams along with the high expectations of parents and society often take a toll on the mental health and well-being of the students. Many students feel depressed, anxious, lonely and hopeless and some of them resort to ending their lives. With recent two such incidents, on September 26, suicide number had crossed 25 this year, 2023, which is a very miserable thing. The rising student suicides have shocked Kota and the nation and have raised questions about the role and responsibility of coaching institutes, parents, society and the government in addressing this issue. Earlier, the district administration has issued some guidelines for coaching institutes to prevent student suicides, such as making it compulsory for hostels to install spring-loaded fans, banning rank-wise segregation of students, providing counselling and mentoring services, and conducting regular inspections. However, these measures seem to be inadequate and ineffective in tackling the root causes of the problem. The problem of student suicides in Kota is not just a matter of academic stress or poor performance. It is also a reflection of larger social and cultural factors that influence the aspirations and choices of the students and their families. The coaching industry in Kota thrives on the demand for admission in prestigious colleges, which offer very limited seats. The students who come to Kota are often driven by the dreams and expectations of their parents who invest a lot of money and emotions in their education. Students also face peer pressure and competition from their fellow aspirants who are equally ambitious and hardworking. So they are constantly under pressure to perform well and achieve their goals without having much time or space for leisure, recreation or social interaction. This has prompted the state government to take some steps to improve the situation and ensure the well-being of the students. The government has formed a 15-member committee headed by Educational Secretary of Rajasthan. By this committee report, government issued a set of guidelines for the coaching institutes in consultation with stakeholders. These guidelines aim to address some of the major problems faced by students and parents in Kota. Let's see what are those guidelines, what are the important guidelines given by the government. Number one, institute shall not allow admission of students below 9th class in coaching institutes as they are considered too young to handle the pressure and competition. These guidelines also mandate screening tests and counselling for students before admission to assess their interest and aptitude. Second guideline, there is a provision for easy exit and refund policy within 120 days of admission. This means that if a student or a parent feels unhappy or dissatisfied with the coaching institute, they can withdraw their admission and get their money back without any difficulty. 
This will give them more flexibility and choice in selecting the best institute for their needs. Third guideline, prohibiting the coaching institutes from glorifying the toppers and publishing the results of routine tests to the public. Instead, they suggest that the institutes should counsel the students individually and keep their mark sheets confidential. They should not be kept on the notice boards. This will help reduce the comparison and competition among the students and foster a more supportive environment. Next guideline, the institutes shall decide the batches alphabetically instead of performance and ranks of them. They discourage shuffling the students in different batches based on their performance in weekly assessments. This will prevent the creation of hierarchy among the students and ensure equal treatment for all. And next important guideline, uh, these cover other aspects such as facial recognition to prevent faking attendance, mandatory weekly holidays, code of conduct for faculty and hostels, and setting up monitoring cells in quota and SICR to oversee the implementation of regulations. Government has also warned that legal action will be taken against any institute that violates these guidelines. On one hand, these guidelines seem to be a positive step towards improving the quality and accountability of coaching education in quota. They may also help reduce some of the stress and anxiety among the students and parents who invest a lot of time, money and effort in pursuing their dreams. On the other hand, some experts have raised questions about the feasibility and effectiveness of these guidelines. They have pointed out that some of these measures may not be practical or enforceable in reality. For example, how will the screening tests and counselling be conducted for lakhs of students who apply every year? How will the easy exit and refund policy work without affecting the financial stability of the institutes? How will the monitoring cells collect and verify data from thousands of institutes operating in quota? Even some argue that these guidelines may not address some of the deeper issues that affect coaching education in quota. For example, they do not tackle the root cause of student suicides such as parental pressure, social stigma, lack of emotional support or unrealistic expectations. So these guidelines also do not challenge the culture of rote learning and memorization that dominates coaching education in India. The problem of student suicides in quota also highlights the need for more awareness and sensibility about mental health among the students, their families and the society at large. The stigma and ignorance associated with mental health often prevent students from seeking help or expressing their feelings. Students may also feel ashamed or guilty for having negative thoughts or emotions or may fear being judged or ridiculed by others. So they lack adequate uh, support systems or coping mechanisms to deal with their stress and challenges. So students need more empathy and compassion from their parents, teachers, friends and mentors who can understand their problems and provide them with proper right guidance and encouragement. So that's all in this uh, one. We'll meet in the next one. If you need a podcast to be made on any specific topic, please let me know the topic in the comment section below. We'll meet you in the next one. Until then, bye.